Hey, aloha, mi amigos. Revelation chapter 10 is some pretty amazing imagination-inducing stuff. It is more fantastical than any science fiction movie, I promise. Because we got to remember that, that God invented imagination. It was his idea. He is the originator of awe and wonder and everything just incredible. He, it was his idea. He, he started it. He ignited it. And Revelation is a pretty good reminder of all that, that he is the mastermind and the ringmaster behind color and wonder and awe. And, and verses 1 through 3 of Revelation chapter 10 kind of remind us of that. And it says this. this. This is John talking, and he's got a vision, and I'm reading it out of the voice Bible. And it says this. Then I saw another extremely powerful messenger descending out of heaven. He wore a cloud wrapped around him, and a rainbow was covering his head. His face shone like the sun, and his legs blazed like columns of fire. In his hand, he held a little scroll that had been unrolled. He placed the, his right foot on the sea and his left foot on dry land. Then he shouted with a voice that sounded like a roaring lion. we got an extremely big angel with big style. He's got big fashion sense. He's wearing a cloud wrapped around him. And he's got a little rainbow hat. His face is glowing. Okay, my, my head glows, but it's for an entirely different reason. It's because I'm bald. And he has, he, he, his legs are ablaze like fire. And he has one foot on the sea, and he's got one foot on dry land, which kind of signifies that he's got a message for the whole earth. And so this big angel has a little scroll. And, and that's what verses 8 through 9 are about. Check this out. Again, the voice I heard from heaven addressed me. Once again, this is John talking. And the voice says to John, Go, take the little scroll that is unrolled in the hand of the messenger, standing both on the sea and on the dry land. I then went to the messenger, and I asked him to give me the little scroll. The heavenly messenger said to him, Take it, eat it, although in your mouth it will be sweet to taste, sweet as honey. It will become bitter when it reaches your stomach. So, so we got a scroll McNugget. This is a scroll that is meant to be eaten. John goes to the angel, asks for the scroll. This, he gives him the scroll, tells him to eat it. He, he eats it, but he tells him this, okay? Before you prophesy, eat the prophecy. Before you, you proclaim the word, eat the word. Before you proclaim it, it needs to become part of you. Digest it before you distribute it. And, and that's the same with us. Before we go telling people the word, before we go telling people God's message, it needs to become a part of us. We need to take it in. We need to live it out. We need to digest it. It needs to become a part of us so, so that we're living it, which is, is so much more important than just saying it. And then we can proclaim it. And then we can put it out there. We need to digest before we distribute. Real important. And he tells them it's going to be sweet and sour. It's going to taste sweet, but once it gets to your stomach, it's going to be sour. And it's going to be bitter. And, and, and it's the same with, with God's message. God's message is sweet and sour. It's sweet and it's total sweetness to those who turn to God and who benefit from it and who, who get life from it. But it's sour for those who turn away. So, so we need to proclaim the word. It needs to become a part of us. And then we can put it out there. We, we digest it, then we distribute it. But once we do that, we need to realize that not everybody's going to like it. Not everybody is going to, to grab a hold of it and run with it. Because it's, it's sweet and sour. It's going to be sweet to some people. It's going to be sour to others. So, so don't be surprised by the reaction. And don't let the, the reaction affect you. Keep doing what you know you're supposed to do. Okay, put it out there. Let it become a part of you and then, then distribute it. God bless you guys. Giddy up.